everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story, and I'm very excited um, about this particular video. Um, so I'm going to try to uh, hop right into the focus of this, which you can obviously already see from the title. Um, but slight introduction, um, I am a huge fan, if you've been watching my channel, uh, for any length of time, you probably know I'm a huge fan of James Eads. Um, he is the creator of, well, actually, I believe it was first the Light Visions, the Prisma Visions, most recently one of my top favorite things, uh, the Open Portals, uh, which I have. I have a comparison video of these. Um, I had this already. Uh, James had sent me the Light Visions when they re-released the Light Visions to do as a review. Um, and com I could compare it to the one that I had already. Um, and so I have that up. I purchased the Open Portals from the Kickstarter. I was so stoked about the Open Portals and still am so stoked about the Open Portals. Um, and so I'm just a huge fan of what he's doing and what he's up to. And uh, if you're not following his Instagram, I would suggest that you did because he even you know shows things on his larger paintings and things of that nature. So I'm a big fan. Um, and I've always said, like production-wise, his stuff is just amazing. Like it's just gorgeous. And the only thing that I would change about uh, both of these decks is the gloss. Like I would change it to a matte and that's personal preference some people love gloss uh, and some people like myself prefer either a satin where it's not high gloss or um, a matte and so that's just personal preference but other than that I mean like the aesthetics of his stuff is just beyond um, amazing gorgeous they're just always cool and you know like this is the guidebook and um, it's just, it's just a really, he's just a cool guy, in my opinion. Um, he's a niche artist to follow. So I'm a big fan. So when I found out, and I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that it was Mr. Jones Davies who um, said, hey, did you know that he was doing a Lenormand deck? Because I somehow, I think I missed it. Um, because he had a separate Instagram for the green um, glyph. And Lenormand, I think that's actually what it's called. Yeah, the Green Glyphs Lenormand. Um, there's a separate um, uh, Instagram account for it. And so I think somehow I missed it or I didn't connect the two or there just was something there. And ever since, uh, I think uh, Mr. Jones Davey and I, he moderates on uh, some of my live chats and things like that. And I think we have t been obsessively tag teaming <laughs> anything regarding the Green Glyphs Lenormand. And so there was just literally two days, today's Friday, so I believe it was like two days ago, James Eads, who is the creator of the deck, had emailed me and said, hey, you had done a uh, comparison video of mine. Um, I also did a video on his, his uh, open portals, which you might not have seen, because uh, that was a deck I had purchased myself. But... Um, um, and, you know, would you be interested in doing a advanced copy or getting an advanced copy of the Green Glyphs to uh, be able to put out on when the Kickstarter opens up? And I'm like, yes, of course. You don't even have to ask me that. You can, no, just go for it. <laughs> yes, please. Um, because I'd already, he had put up, like, who's going to be in the first 100 backers? And I'm like, me and Mr. Jones Davey. Like, we're going to be first two in line because we're, we're just bo both psyched about it. And you're going to see why I'm so really extra stoked about this. A, I just love Lenormand, and I use Lenormand. And so I love all things Lenormand. But B... Um, you'll see why. There's some extra little things in here that just make this like, oh, yes, 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 and please, yes, some more. Um, so this is an advanced copy. This is not, uh, and I don't know, uh, I don't think much is, is intended. There's no intention, I believe, of things changing, um, but this is an advanced copy, and I, so I do need to make sure that I state that in case there are uh, any other kind, any other changes. Um, but everything's done, and that's what, see, that's why, I mean, I don't even hesitate to back his Kickstarter things, which I did with open portals, is because, A, he's already put out so many different things, and 
should be, um, it's generally all done. Like in this case, it's it, the, everything's done. So that is always, for me personally, because you know I have zero patience, um, that's like the best uh, way to go into a Kickstarter when everything's done. So my point being, this is an advanced copy. So if something's changed slightly between now and then, that might be why. But I am very, very stoked. So again, now that I've done gushing, um, <laughs> because I really am, I'm a huge fan. That's just, you know, sometimes it's great to, to get decks to reviews and, and then other times it's like you're a fangirl and that's this kind of how I am about James Eads. So <laughs> um, this is the Green Glyphs Lenormand. Um, there are 40 cards because there is an extra card to exchange for the cross card. There's an albatross card and there is also extra cards for the people card. So there are an extra man and woman card. I think it's gentleman and lady. Uh, there's a person card. Um, but anyways, there's some, those are the two, those are the extras, the uh, albatross instead of the cross. And then there are extra people cards. So if you want two males or two females or, you know, that whatever configuration that you want to put in. Um, so it's 40 cards instead of 36. The Norman is generally 36. And there's an 80-page guidebook created by James R. Eads, first edition, 2019, made in China. Um, the box is really cool. Again, I'm a fan. You know, I'm a fan of his. This, these boxes are just you know, stunning, stunningly done. Uh, the booklets are stunningly done. Like, I just love everything that he does. This is a playing card set, and the, but the, if you look at the individual boxes, um, they're just gorgeous. Like, everything that he does is just really beautifully crafted. And so that's something I just love. Um, a, just about the cards, but even just the whole... But everything he does is just beautiful. So it's exciting to get. And this is no different. It is covered with, um, he has taken, uh, just, this just makes me so excited. I mean, you, you all know if you follow my channel, you know, I made a whole casting system based off of taking bigger things down into their symbolic forms, right? Um, and so this is what he's done with Lenormand where he's made glyphs for each, um, you know, each of the things is turned into sort of a glyph there, um, which is really cool. Like you can see the tower here. Um, you can see the coffin here. Um, I haven't obviously looked at the whole deck. You can see the stork there, the moon, right? There's the ship. So he, that's why it's called the Green Glyphs Lenormand. So it's a metallic um, box, uh, closure box, which is different uh, than the other ones that I have from him. I love it. Love, of course, the green tones. It is just beautiful yellowy greens here. Um, this is just sort of a art card that came with it or like a, card, a promotional card 9 17 19 that's when of course the today when this this video is coming out is the day of the kickstarter um green glyphs uh, dot com and just just the little glyphs there so i mean into cardstock this is what's so amazing i have already pulled it out to feel and it is a stunning matte cardstock which is one of the again the only faults i would have said with his two tarot decks is I wish that they were matte. These are, this is matte, gorgeous matte. Um, here's a little thank you uh, on a print of the house card. Look at it. it. says, thank you. Hi, Kelly. Thank you so much for agreeing to do a review. Your enthusiasm is much appreciated. I, I don't know if my enthusiasm is appreciated or if, if it's a slightly scary for him. I'm not sure. <laughs> no. Um, so then here is the guidebook, which again, it's just gorgeous right everything is just gorgeous so what does it say over here it says there are many paths that have led you here and there are many paths that lead you away from here may these cards recall the paths you have traveled may they illuminate the paths that need guidance and may they reveal that there are some paths better left unknown james Eid. um so we have that there. I don't know if there's anything. So there's the, it looks like the dog card um, in the back of the box. This is like a paper, is a paper insert. It feels very sturdy. Um, it has a nice, this is a pet peeve of mine, uh, because when things are bound up like this in the little wrapper thing, it's all well and good. But when you take it off, if it is a single, we'll get a peek at the um, albatross, 
they'll slide down behind there and it's really annoying. Um, this seems to be very um, sturdy and set to have that not happen, which is amazing. These were obviously wrapped in that plastic paper. So we'll put that to the side and we'll put the book to the side. So it is beautiful. You've got some of the cards on the back. Um, no um, scan UPC code. I hate beautiful boxes that end up with UPC codes, you know, and you have to for the mass market, but love that. Okay, so let's set that up here. That's the box. And let's zoom in a little bit so we can see the book. So it is... Uh, let's see, to the actual text of the book, about 85 pages. That's just graphic. So it's about 85 pages um, there. It's beautifully bound. I mean, again, everything, I mean, I've got several of his, his guidebooks and stuff. They're all bound really beautifully. They've all held up. You know, I don't tend to go back to guidebooks a ton, um, but they, you know, his stuff holds up really well. Um, you know, I've not had, because I have had that happen with non-mass market where they're beautiful little books, but then the pages start falling out. I haven't had that problem. Um, obviously this is, it happens more with the smaller bo uh, guidebooks than this size, but I've not had any of that issue with, um, the guidebook. So, um, really beautifully done. I love the simple, um, yellow accents. Um, and then of course you have green through it. Uh, it's a nice little guidebook. I have um, looked through this briefly um, just because I obviously wasn't going to read it all on screen, so I just wanted to get a feel for it. I feel like it gives you the foundation. I, there's certain things that I check, right? <laughs> I do check the history section to see if the person who's creating it um, acknowledges the fact that this is not something that Mademoiselle Lenama ever used. That that was mis, you know, kind of misconnected to her name, um, which they, he definitely has done. I looked to see do they reference the game of hope? Yes, he did. Did they reference copy ground reading symbols? Yes, he did. Did he explain why there were missing numbers in the in the in the um, playing cards? That that was a that's a that's just a deck. It's a deck that still is being used today of card playing cards. He explained that. Um, he does talk a little bit about the pips uh, the, or the playing card insets um, and whether or not that w it seems to lean in here a little bit more towards maybe that was intentional, which is not something that I personally hold to with Lenormand. I do believe that the playing card insets were not um, meant to uh, directly reference. So if you look at playing card divination around the time, it doesn't line up with the meanings of Lenormand cards in any way. Um, I do think it was fairly randomized. Um, however, uh, you can come up with some loose connections, which he acknowledges there, and he does give you some of that. And he also makes a great acknowledgement that you can never look at the playing cards and still read Lenormand very thoroughly. So I like that. That's something I will take a peek at. Um, so I, you know, it kind of hit all of the things that I tend to take a peek at and look um, to see, okay, you know, have they at least a person making this Lenormand deck at least done their due diligence to get some basic understanding of where Lenormand has come from. And I was very pleased to see that. He does have a section talking about how it's different than Terra. Um, I do, and so I thought that was really good. He does equate tarot being kind of into the insight of the subconscious, where Lenormand is useful for telling the past and future events and sort of laying out the story of what's happening, which is something that I do agree, although um, I will qualify and say that you know, Lenormand, you can read... Um, it's not just a surface level thing. You can dip into the subconscious. You can dip into spiritual. I do spiritual readings all the time with Lenormand and it works beautifully. Um, so it, it, it does um, travel the, the different layers of reading really well um, when you get comfortable with it. But it is one that is leans towards the more um, um, practical it has a practical nature to it that is really one of its strong suits but I will say it, it can be used for anything so he talks about that he talks about combinations so I feel like everything you know he does a really great job breaking down the card um, he gives you the um, 
you know, the mnemonic device or so to speak, the story. So if you, to try to help you to remember um, the order, the writer uh, arrives with a clover in his pocket and heads to the ship by the house with the big tree. As clouds roll on, the snake slithers towards shelter uh, while the men walk by carrying a coffin decorated with a bouquet. And so, so it goes through the whole order of um, the cars. Um, he also talks about neutral, positive, and he doesn't use the word negative. He uses unfortunate, which is kind of weird with positive and unfortunate. I guess I probably would have been fortunate and unfortunate is how I would um, look at that. But that's also from my geomancy. Um, you know, I love geomancy and it talks a lot about fortunate and unfortunate. Um, and he, I definitely agree with what he says. I love that he puts this section in here. The bulk of the cards in the deck are neutral in that they don't add or take away from a situation, but rather symbolize something. Now he lines out seven cards that are that can be unfortunate to their surroundings. I like that he says can be. Um, snake, coffin, whip, scythe, clouds, cross, and mice. And there are a few cards that are generally positive, like the clover, the bouquet, the dog, the stars, the heart, the ring, the sun, the key. Um, and, and he color codes these to visually represent um, those uh, neutrality versus um, fortunate versus unfortunate um, there as well. He does mention no reverse cards in Lenormand, so that's a big plus. So in, in general, or in short, I suppose I would say, um, I do think he does a great job of giving you all of the, if you came to this deck without any knowledge of Lenormand, I feel like he sets the playing um, field really well, gives you the basic information, that certainly way more than I had. <laughs> I had the little white book in the Piatnik Lenormand, which was literally a little white tiny um, book, right? They were, I don't believe there was any if there were I didn't know about the any books in English quite yet um, so yeah this is fantastic um, then he goes through each of the cards and he just gives you um, keywords which I'm actually a fan of you know I teach Lenormand and I always recommend that we start with just some key information about the cards. And if you get way too much keywords at the get-go, um, it just starts to get really muddled. And so I think that that is a great way to approach it. So he has the glyph. There's not an image of the card, but there is a glyph. Uh, the writer, whether it's new, whether he considers it's neutral, positive, or um, unfortunate, um, so he's got that there. Of course, some of that can you know, shift a little bit. Um, some of that, you know, everybody's can maybe place things on different things. I have a video on um, positive, neutral, and uh, and you can also get to sort of positive, positive, neutral, 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 negative to negative. Like it's a, it's a very balanced system. Um, so yeah, so he's got that news, announcements, messages, a visitor, arrival, speed, energy, horse. And then he gives you a couple examples if it was combined. So like a rider and bouquet would be a delivery of a gift, a delivery of something great, right? A rider versus scythe might be a really quick something, you know, difficult Situ news coming your way or difficult situation coming rather quickly, right? Love arriving with the heart, um, lucky news with the, with the clover. Now, he has fake news for the fox. Um, uh, that To me, that would be more of a news, uh, a warning that might be, uh, the delivery of a warning um, would probably, but I do see the fox differently than, than a lot of people, so that I uh, accept that. <laughs> um, and so that's what he has for each of the cards. Um, fitness is very interesting with the whip. I guess you would be fit if you were you know, hitting some, <laughs> beating somebody over and over again, that repetitive nature of that, you know, that's, so that's an interesting one to have first. I guess, you know, for me, it would be, be a, like conflict and argument and discussion for me would be ones I would want to see up at the top, uh, because you think that the top one would probably be a primary message, whereas I wouldn't think of fitness as the primary message of the whip card. And sex is used for the whip card um, in French traditions. Um, I believe it's French traditions. 
Um, lilies are used um, more so in German traditions in the way that I was taught. Again, I, there are variations on all that, uh, all those things. So perhaps a little blurb about there being different traditions in Lenormand and so that you can see some variations in what is the work card. Um, again, I've got a bunch of videos on Lenormand, so this isn't meant to teach Lenormand, but that's why you might see variations. The sex card is, there's sometimes variation. The work card is often anchor in German traditions and sometimes Fox uh, for uh, other, uh, I think would be the French tradition, maybe it would be Fox. There's a couple other different ones that you might have uh, where people use certain cards for certain things uh, in that tradition. We have the birds card. Um, anyway, so we go through uh, these. So then we get all the way through and we get to the people card here. Um, there is a gentleman, the person or the lady to representing the querent. Um, then we, or if it's if it's a woman and she's representing a gentleman, it would be somebody um, in the querent's life. Um, we have the lady or the gentleman too, and then um, so there's options there for the people cards. Uh, we have our lily here, sun, moon, obviously. I love the little fish. Look at the cute little fish glyph. Um, and then in the cross one, there is two cards, a cross or the albatross. So the albatross has that idea of a warning uh, built, built into, I think, the mythology of uh, a warning. And so it even says um, a warning for what comes before a challenge of what follows it. Um, so that's kind of leaning more towards the albatross. I'll likely keep the cross in play just because I my fox card plays pretty heavy into warning to pay attention about things, which I love uh, that concept, but I'll probably, uh, for myself, I'll be leaving the cross in just um, because that's how I read. Um, then it gets into reading with prayer pairs, pairs, using it in its poetic, reading triplets, uh, chaining and mirroring, reading and, you know, doing line reading. Readings, uh, doing the nine card sort of portrait um, and then some ways that you could use the inset pips. Um, I know Caitlin Matthews also in her book talks about this so there are definitely ways and he does talk about using it for yes and no's which I that's probably the only way that I use uh, pips personally again everybody's different um, and count how to count pips there and then he talks about the grand tableau um, and then using the colors uh, in terms of knighting uh, here crossing paths linking the houses together um, and then so he gives you I mean to me that is a really great um amount of information to get you going. If you're falling headlong into Lenormand, will you want to pick up like Caitlin Matthews Complete Lenormand? Yes. Uh, Andy, I never get his last name correct, has a smaller book on Lenormand that I really love. 36, those 36 cards. I'll put links to those below. Um, those are, those are probably my two favorites. Um, but this, I think you could not know Lenormand to take this and get a really good start on how to read. Um, but then he goes a step, wonderful step further, um, and gives us the rules for playing it as the Game of Hope, which is um, the earliest deck that we have in the 1790s um, is um, the Earl Lenormand, and it is gives us the instructions on how to play uh, the game of hope and so he has uh, put a translation uh, of that in to so that you can actually play the game my last Lenormand class this year um, uh, we played uh, and it was fun because a we just played a couple rounds first but then we also played a round where we played the game and tried to keep track of what people had gotten, uh, you know, the cards. So they, you know, because they roll or, you know, they do what they're going to do, right? And then they have to, they roll the dice so they can to, can move and they land on a card, land on a card, land on a card. land. So then we took those cards that they landed on and used that as a reading. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and so, yeah, so the instructions are there uh, for the back. It gives... Um, some his acknowledgments there, a couple of suggestions of Kate, like Caitlin Matthews, Complete Norman, highly recommend. 
um, doesn't list the other one that I highly highly recommend, but I will uh, again put a link to that in the back. But he does give you some other resources there um, to use. So nicely done, nicely done uh, guidebook there. So I'm going to stick that, oops, up and out of the way. And of course, the important part. So here are the amazing backs, which are of course the green glyph Lenormand. So it's green and there are glyphs, right? Green, green glyphs. Um, the side is, you know, I don't know what you it would call this. It's almost like a either it's not I feel like it's not gold I'm trying to see if I have anything this is silver and it's not shiny so if you'll see you know obviously some uh, gilding is, is shiny this is the beautiful matte but it's almost like a copper is kind of how I would see that uh, I'll have to you have to it'll pay it see on his um, on the Kickstarter will obviously say that what but to, in person this is gold yeah this is more of a gold and this has far to yeah this to me is a like a, a matte copper is how I would describe it uh, myself I'm not saying that's how he describes it <laughs> um, the cardstock is just gorgeous it's it's super matte um, I know you know I have a Lenormand deck that has a matte to it and this is similar except for it's a little more matte uh, more of that silky matte um, and it's thicker cardstock like if this is divine cardstock uh, we'll see how it shuffles sometimes some of the new mats that they're making um, are not actually fun to shuffle with they stick um, this doesn't feel like it's going to do that I feel like it's going to riffle well I obviously don't want to do that yet um, and obviously the uh, gilding yes the gilding is not sticky at all so you're not getting clumps so I think this is going to shuffle really beautifully but we will see at the end so let me zoom in here So, beautiful. Um, so we have the little card inset, right? We have the image of the symbol, which in this case is the rider. We have a, obviously a shadow here. Um, the, we have the number one rider and the glyph. This is very small. You know that I have problems reading things. A, I don't think that matters. You should be able to tell really clearly by looking at the card. but. I will say that I do not have glasses on right now and I can read it just fine. So it is small, but it's readable. Beautiful. I love the um, the uh, the cutting of the card, not in half, but where you have the upper and the bottom color there like that. I, I think that they, um, that's really beautiful. I don't think it holds through on all of them, but it, you can see that in a lot of the cards and it just, is, it makes a it image really pop. So it's simple, it's a silhouette, it's gorgeous, love it. I'm gonna color pile these just to come back to the color coding in a little bit. Here we have the beautiful clover. It's a very mustardy green uh, that I love. Um, it's not a bright Kelly green or anything like that, which I also love, but this is kind of more of a mustardy uh, gold color. And I think that's because of the color coordination of positive and, and negative and neutral. So we have the clover card, beautiful ship card. I love to see the movement um, in the ship because it is a movement, it is a journey. Um, I just love ship cards. It's one of the cards that I do look at um, in Lenormand decks too because I just love the cards. And so it's, you know how in, and when you get a tarot deck or something, there's certain cards you always look to to see how they're depicted. And the ship is one of those for me love the house we saw that uh here with this uh particular uh thank you note here so sweet um it is that homey inner space i actually like that it's not a big mansion you know this is about the safety and security of home versus the outside energy of say the garden card and so i do really love that it looks like this homey home uh, you know, windows lit up in the moonlight. And again, it doesn't matter with Lenormand because it, whether it's a mansion or it's a little cottage or whatever it is, it, a house is a house is a house. The image doesn't change by any means in any way. The image does not change what the meaning of the card is with 
Lenormand. And so, but I do particularly like this. <laughs> Um, beautiful tree. Um, again, I love so far, I really like um, what the, the use of shadows um, that are here where, where appropriate. And I love um, the use of the, the shadows of the trees and you can see the leaves even more so somewhat in the tree shadow than you do in the silhouette of the tree. But I absolutely love this tree. This, I'm sorry because I, I do feel like this is kind of how this is going to go. It's going to be go, oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. Oh, I really love this. But I'm just... I am definitely in love with this deck. Um, he showed them all. So if you followed his Green Glyph Lenormand... Um, Instagram, he showed all of them, so I have seen these, and I already knew that I loved them all. Um, I was going to be first in line for that. <laughs> for that, here we have the clouds. Um, I do like that there's some open area. Um, the color tones of browns are because of his color coordinating. The clouds are a um, unfortunate. Um, card in Lenormand and so uh, that's why we have that color palette. It's not a blue sky um, but I do like that there is an open space and there's an opening space in this direction where things are starting to clear up and it does look lighter over here and darker over here so I do like cards to have that differentiation between that and so I think that that stands out really well. Here we have the snake card. This to me is very James Ede in the coloration of the snake. Um, I love that it's very neutral looking. It doesn't look like the skull and crossbones. Um, for me, the snake isn't actually a um, negative card where it is in some um, traditions. It's a complicated card. So it's definitely complicated, uh, but it also leads to transformation for me. So I really, for, as a reader, because this is a deck I'll be using, um, I like this because it doesn't get in the way of the way that I read the cards. Um, here we have the coffin card, which is obviously not a happy card, but it's also, you know, the funny thing is, and I have a video on this, for me the coffin card is neutral, so it's one of the ways that I definitely differ from traditional Lenormand. It's a period at the end of something, and sometimes that's fortunate and sometimes that's unfortunate, <laughs> right? If it's the end of a really bad relationship, that's actually a good thing. It's time to get out of that. You know, if it's the ending of losing somebody that you love, then that's not not a good thing, right? So uh, for me, and, and that I think in the case of most of the cards, context is key with Lenormand, but I do love this card and I would have no issues working with this particular card. <laughs> um, okay, so I love this tree. Uh, the tree, and there's another one, the snake for sure. This to me so feels like a little bit of a peek back into some of the, the flowers that, of course, I won't be able to find one to, to be very helpful, but it was just like a peek back into some of the color uh, flower patterns and things that we see um, in the Prisma Visions. Um, so it just made me smile to see it, and the bouquet should make you smile. So I uh, quite love that card. Um, I like that the scythe is very clearly directional, as scythes um, can. We can see what is that going to be harvesting um, over here in this direction. So I love that that's very clear. Um, I also like that while it looks a little bit like a weapon, um, it also is a scythe, right? It is something that is also used to harvest. Generally, you'll often see like a, some sh wheat sheaths, and I like that because it reminds people that, um, that yes, scythes can be picked up and used and cut yourself or cut somebody painfully. They also harvest something in. Um, and so I at least like that it still remains visible as a... Um, as a scythe so that I can navigate to that, that, that aspect. Um, and so you can see that the clouds, the scythe, have that sort of brown tone um, of the unfortunate cards, such as the whip as well. Sometimes, as he said in the guidebook, you'll see this as whip or broom, or sometimes whip and broom, or sometimes rods, which are also used to whip people. But it is that idea of repetitive negative motions. And broom sweeping isn't necessarily negative, but it's repetitive motion. And for me, it's really a card about being stuck in the past 
patterns that you just keep repeating over and over again. Um, it's just a clean, clear whip, and I approve. I really love the clean space in this bird card, except that I see birds as being, the bird card as being very noisy um, and can be about anxiety and being nervous and things like, and more nervous energy. And these birds don't particularly look nervous, but again, we don't use the image of Lenormand to determine the meaning of the card. Um, and I, as visually, I really do like the um, clean openness of, I just like the card. It's just really simple and clean and it does keep it neutral because there are other things um, that the birds can mean as well here we have the child card again I love the shadow I like the bigger shadow than the actual little child there is pretty cute um, so when we have the Sun coming it's a fresh day it's a new beginning right it's a new start um, so that's really cute love it um, again, fox love. It's clean, it's neutral. However, I choose to read the fox because the fox for me is one of my favorite cards in the deck. Um, it is definitely has warnings that are um, part of uh, it's meanings, but it's also about being smart and clever and thinking outside of the box. So this just feels very neutral, and I just love the image in general. And it doesn't, it, while he's brown, it doesn't have that um, brown uh, aspect of the unfortunate card. So I love that. Uh, bear card, love, very protective of the baby bear here. That very protective, strong energy that for me bear represents. Um, sometimes uh, your own inner strengths and resources, sometimes you know, representing mothers or mentors and things of that nature. And that really just picks that beautifully. Here we have the beautiful stars card that again has that sort of gold and yellow uh, tones that lends it to be, of course, a very fortunate card. Love that it looks like with the wings up this way, they're not folded down. I love this because there is a sense of motion. He's either just landed right into a better space that the stork talks about, or he's getting ready to take off, but there is still at least that degree of movement. Um, again, does the image matter? No, but I just, well, sometimes when there's stork cards and they're just sitting there with their wings folded and you're like, this is a movement card. Why is the stork just sitting there? So I do appreciate that. Here we have the dog card, um, just a happy, simple dog, bright yellow tone, mustardy yellow tones of a fortunate card, friendship, trust, those types of things. We have the tower card. I love it. It's a Rapunzel's tower. I absolutely love um, the neutrality of this because this can be offices and buildings and corporate, like big buildings and things, but it's also about getting up and being a, for me, I often read this as stepping back and getting up and able to get that perspective and being able to see ahead. So I'll often, okay, well, if we have, you know, the whip cards next, which is problematic, the tower lets me see over that card and into where things are. You can't even see what I've just done, but sorry, <laughs> I'm zoomed in. But let's say we have three cards like this. The tower allows me to see over the trouble at hand or even the good stuff at hand and see where things are headed. It gives me perspective, right? Um, and so I quite love that it looks like a tall tower that I could gain that perspective from. This is one of my favorites along of this deck, just because, again, along with the um, bouquet card and what was the other one that I really felt like the snake card as well. Like I feel like you just really see the art style of James E. Not he's, I'm sure he has lots of different kinds of art styles, but I, it it takes me back to the beauty of prison vision type, those type of scenery. And I just love it. I, I absolutely love this card. <laughs> the mountain card, this is an obstacle, right? It's not a total shutdown. You can get underneath it, you can climb over it, you can go around it, but it's definitely an obstacle. Uh, beautiful, a beautiful obstacle. Love the path road. What I like about this um, well, A, you have very two clear, very direction, so you can look in this direction towards this card, or this goes clearly to this direction to this card, so you can do a little bit of either or going on here. But I also like how the road on either way gets a little choppy, 
chopped up with the way that the landscapes are moving because there is that understanding that right now this is what we have we have this decision to make are we going this way or this way we don't know where all either way those are going to fully end right we can't know exactly what's going to happen so right now what's the choice the best choice we can make in the moment it really puts the emphasis on this moment of choice this moment of decision so i really like that uh, visual here we have the mice Poor mice. Poor mice always up to no good and taking, eating away at things, although sometimes they can be eating away at, say, an obstacle. And that can be something that's not so bad, right? Um, again, it's fortunate, unfortunate, um, positive, negative. That's very situational and it's very context driven. What I do like is that even though these are brown and so we know these lend towards the unfortunate, it's not like this really like, oh my gosh, these are just like black cards of death. You know, they do have that, you can see that and have that cue in, but it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't take away your agency to see how these cards work in context. So I really appreciate that. Here we have the heart card, um, which is the human heart. <laughs> um, you know, it, it is what it is. It's not, you know, it's not going all uh, candy, candy heart boxes. This is the power of the human heart and human emotion that gets read a lot about in Lenormand, right? Um, we have the gold of the ring, uh, the commitment. This is a positive card of commitment. Um, it doesn't need to mean marriage, but that is the symbol that connects that, that strong partnership here that's going to last a while. Uh, love the book. I love the glyph on the book. Um, I just love it. It's, just, it's a book. I love his use of shadows in this deck. Um, that really stands out to me. Like even the little mice uh, have shadows. Uh, the book has a shadow. The, not everything in the deck has a shadow, but I, it's standing out to me. I just love his use of shadow in this deck. There we go with that. Now, here is one of the reasons. There's another one somewhere. I hope I haven't missed it already. Um, then he said, I, I did email him to ask him this uh, because if you look, and I'm going to zoom in even further. Do you see? Oh, I don't know. No, I don't know. It's like, no, I can't, can't uh, track it. That is a Geomancy Shield chart, my friends. If you watch my channel, you know I am obsessed with Geomancy. I absolutely love it. I use it for myself and clients. Uh, I, I love Geomancy, and you don't see a lot of Geomancy show up on things. And that is a Geomancy Shield chart in the letter. And I love this because the letter card is actually has become really one of a power card for me um, that isn't just about messages. We have multiple cards that can reference messages, um, but it's often the first degree of of. Um, manifestation when we get something out of our heads and onto a piece of paper we're manifesting that into the physical world and geomancy is all about understanding and seeing the energy that's at play so that it can be shifted um, and so getting that message hearing that what you're getting getting the lay of the land um, that even if it's not a great message, if you didn't get a letter that, you know, sunshine and roses, that letter, that message, that um, reading that you're doing is going to help you to navigate the energy around yourself more um, efficiently. So I absolutely love, and just, I'm sorry, there's just not geomancy shields in anything. And so that like that sealed the deal as soon as I well, I was already going to get there but that made me want to be one of the first 100 people for sure so there we have that um, so then we get to 28 and 29 are the people cards so there are the gentleman card here as we can see uh, and a lady so this would be the first iteration of that and they're sweet again I really like the use of shadows I love her dress here um, I'm a bit of a traditionalist um, I've never had any issue uh, doing readings uh, for anybody because I don't ask people what you know 
what what their sexual preferences are if they if they offer it that's great but I don't ask it and so I always just go off of who I'm reading for and say whoever is significant to you is represented by the other it doesn't matter about gender and it's I've never had an issue with that um, so I tend to just leave those in unless I've just been to, you know they've given me that information um, so um, so those are the ones that are given uh, let me go back to the end here and pull out the extra ones now now, there is a more modern lady so let me zoom out a little bit more there we go there's a more modern lady who is not in a dress because you know not every uh, buddy wants to wear dresses I never wear dresses I still do love ladies cards with dresses even though I don't wear them and you have a more casual like he looks like a more these look like more typical what you would have in an older Lenormand deck and these just look a little bit more of a modern uh, gentleman so you can use either oh you know I like this look or I like this look better um, obviously you can then have uh, two males uh, or two females if that is what you need for your uh, reading um, and then there is also a person card which is gender neutral I really you know again these are just my my things because I have personal preference I wish there was another one to go with this one so this is the person and then I wish there was one that would say the significant or the other person <laughs> Um, because then it's you have two totally neutral cards um, of um, that doesn't doesn't keep gender is not even part of the factor. But if you use the person card, you still have to pick one of these other ones as a significator card. So I would have loved to seen like the person and the other person. Thing one, thing two. But you know this is perfect. This is nitpicking to the, this is just you know oh, it would have been perfect, right? Uh, but generally I do really like her as well. But for right now for me um, I'm just going to leave these two uh, into my personal deck uh, for the moment. But I love the options, right? It really gives, if this is your deck, right? And you are just reading for yourself um, and you are a man whose significant other would be a man, you have that option. If you are a female reading for yourself and your significant would be a female um, or whatever. You can, my point is, if it's just you reading for yourself, you can set that into place and be done with it. Uh, if you're like myself and a professional reader where that's going to change all the time, and a lot of decks don't have, I use a lot of older decks that don't have extras, don't stress too much about it. As I said, if, if you're just upfront about that, um, this is an old system and it was, you know, bit made in a time in which they're going to put those cards out and that's what it represents. And I've not had an issue with person not being able to get their message if you're clear about it. So that's that. I love having the options. These are kind of neutral colors. Okay, let's go back here. We're almost done. Here we have the beautiful lily card. I do love my lilies to be white. Um, it's just traditional preference, right? So I was really happy to see that. It was just like, oh, yes, thank you. Love it. Love you. It just look white. just looks very harmonious and balanced and just feels like it. Now look at the sun. The sun now reminds me a lot of something I might see in the open portals. I, I absolutely love the sun. It looks like the sun. It is shining. It is bold. Um, it is going to lift all the cards up around it. It's beautiful. Then we have the moon card. Is the moon card? I love the you know color tones around the edge of it, and then the more this is, you can see the the uh, craters on the surface and things. It's a moon. I adore it. Uh, I don't love it as much as the sun is amazing. Whereas this is just that's a great moon. Love the key. Love the gold color. Success. Love the filigree here. Love the energy like emanating from the point. This is putting the right key into the right lock, and it just this uh, things clicking in your favor. I just think that that just personifies that well. Absolutely love the fish. Again, has a Prisma Visions feel to me. Whatever that might mean, right? Just the art from Prisma Visions, and it makes me smile. Um, there are fish. There are multiple fish, which I prefer uh, in mine. Again, it doesn't matter, but I it's a preference. So, you know, it's always two thumbs up when you get your preference. And I just love them. They're adorable. 
Then we have the anchor card, and the anchor is my work card. It's an anchor. It's it's solid, and it's sitting there, and it's ready to grab hold of and keep you anchored down. It's There's nothing much to say other than I love it. It's what it's supposed to be, and it's very clear what it's supposed to be. So bam to the anchor. Um, and then finally we have the cross card. Now this is where we do have two options. Both of them have the brown backgrounds because they are meant to be unfortunate. Um, the cross is a card that is about weight, you know, being weighted down, uh, heaviness, uh, these types of energies. The albatross here is, you know, obviously been shot by an arrow and is downed. There is a warning of difficult things to come. Again, I use my fox card. Um, it has built into that a bit of a warning to pay attention. Um, so this isn't a card that I would swap in with uh, for the cross, but I do, I do like. It's always great to have extra cards. You don't have to use them, um, but they're there if. Um, for you, maybe the fox means something totally different and having that bit of warning built into the cross card, you know, you might enjoy that. I tend to stay with traditional cards for the most part when there are options, unless there's just some reason that I just have to have it that way. Um, but that's why there's two, those two options are there. I would be keeping, obviously, as I said, the... Um, the cross. So let me zoom back out here. You can see I made some piles. There are lots of zero background, right? These are set up to be neutral, which I really like about the snake. I'm going to open up his section on his color coding, uh, but we have all of these neutral backgrounds. Okay, so in general, the, the two real important color coordinations are the predominance of yellow uh, or gold being the, the positive or the fortunate cards and the predominance of orange and brown being the unfortunate cards. So he does list the snake there because if you see there is uh, brown and orange is there, but <laughs> but what I love is that it isn't actually really dominant like we have in the others because of the way that I see the snake card. So I actually really like that it stands really um, uh, neutral tone. For, for me, that works very, very well. Um, and he also talks about it in Nighting, uh, which we're not going to obviously go into, but it, but he seems to focus on, you know, these other colors are, you know, just kind of there and more neutral based like these. And the in terms of color coding, these just really highlight this is a positive card, whereas this might be a problematic card to pay attention to. So that tends to be how the colors are there. Um, but just look how gorgeous they are. It's a very, I want to say like modern but 70s color palette vibe to me personally. That's kind of what it feels like and I absolutely love it. Okay, folks, let us see how this is gonna shuffle. I have a feeling it's gonna shuffle beautifully. So here we've got the extra cards that I'm not gonna be using. So you can do two things, What I because I love this box. Oh, look. Oh, <laughs> I love those little things. I'm just going to put the extra cards down here. Um, this way I can easily grab them out of the box and I don't have to think about, um, actually I'll probably put all this down in here too because I want to keep that. Um, and that way I don't have to dig it out um, unless I just want to get it. I if, if I can do that, I like to do that. Um, so yeah, so there's that those away. Let's shuffle. And I know, do as I say, not as I do. Um, you are not so technically supposed to riffle shuffle guild edging decks. Number one, I don't care. Um, my decks, I'm not keeping them for resale value. I use them and I love them. And I don't care if they look like they're used. Um, if it's good gilding, it should still age beautifully. So this would be the most used of the gilded. And you'll see, and this is not the same kind of gilding. This is shiny gilding. But this has been riffle shuffled a lot. And so can you see some degree of wear? Sure. But it's beautiful. Same thing with my Fountain Terra. Other decks that I have with matte gilding that are good um, gilding. Let's see, I wish I had something matte to show. This has amazing, you know, it's the star um, and Nicole. Oh my gosh, my brain totally 
totally Noel Danielle Noel I don't know where I came up with Nicole. Hers has um, this matte type of golding of gilding. Absolutely stunning. I riffle shuffle shuffle this a ton and it holds up. So the the short answer is that because people cringe every time I do this, um, technically you shouldn't riffle shuffle gilding. At the same time, um, if you're not concerned about it and if it's done well, if it's good gilding, um, I have personally find, found that it will hold up uh, well. Beautiful. Look at that. Nice. Nice. This is why I love to riffle shuffle. Let me pull this up here. See that? That is a good mix. So generally what I do is uh, it has a little slight tackiness to it because it's fresh. That tends to go away. Um, beautiful. They riffle gorgeous. They're not going in chunks. They're not hard to push in because of that really matte. Sometimes it's gotten sticky in some newer decks. Um, let's overhand it. It's overhand as well. Yeah. This is really beautiful. So now, you know, let's put these in a couple configurations here, obviously. If I'm going to do a reading for myself, let's say I want to do a, just a general, hello, what you got to talk to me about today? Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Probably would do some more, you know, riffle shuffling to really get a good mix out of a new deck that's all in order. And then I pull off, when I'm doing a nine card, unless it's just totally random, and even when it's totally random, I still go off. I turn it over and I find the woman card, um, which you can see is right here. Um, and I'm just going to, because this isn't an actual reading, uh, well, let me just show you how what I do when, I, when that happens, because I get asked that a lot. So I take the three cards, or four cards after it, obviously I don't have it, and that's okay, that lets me know that the future is still a little bit in flux here, right? I'm heading towards my stars, but there's some things that are still in flux. And then I take the four cards before it. Right, that's what's kind of interesting is there's a, an ending happening here, uh, but it's, it's not clear what's there. A lot of people will say, you know, what do you do with, your, with doing it that way? Because this is a way that I do. Um, what do you do when you don't have, when you have an empty space? It's similar to astrology when you say oh, there's nothing in the house. Well, there's something going on there. It's just in the, by it being empty, it can have even more to say. So for this, this is really interesting because it would tell me, all right, something is happening. Um, something is coming up at the end of something. It doesn't mean something could be something good, could be something bad, but there is a big shift as an uh, end and a beginning coming. We do, I, I'm not clear what that is. Um, it has to do uh, with my sense, of, but from this, right, pay attention to my well-being. I'm about to have a lesson. <laughs> that's kind of how I would read this, right? Again, just, just really quickly, something is going to come that's going to be a major ending in some way, whether that's positive or negative. You know, I stay grounded, stay rooted, um, stay, you know, pay attention to my own sense of self well, well-being, um, because there's lessons to be learned. Um, and you know, sometimes lessons aren't fun. Like they say, don't pray for patience because God's going to give you lots of things that you're going to have to learn how to be patient for. But you know, we have bouquet moving to the stars. So whatever's happening, I'm moving in the direction that I need to be going. I'm moving towards, um, my overall path or pattern, um, that I should be moving forward. So that's also reassuring to see the sun is here. The sun lifts everything up. Uh, the sun says everything's going to be okay. Now, um, so again, I'm not trying to do a complete reading, but you know, that is a, to me, a very powerful, uh, first reading message. So yeah, don't be afraid of empty spaces. They have something to tell you as well. Um, so there we've got that. Um, I can't lay it all out in a tableau. I'd have to take everything down, uh, which I do uh, sometimes shift. Uh, can I, I can't think I can do an 8x4 either, but let's just try. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I don't think so. I generally have to clear some of my space off uh, if I'm not going to, yeah. For sure, um, if I am not going to do, but let's do a six. Uh, I won't be able to won't be able to see all of them because this is how you play the game of hope.
but you put them in order. But I just wanted you to see the cards in a tableau style just so that you can see the cards um, together. And they're gorgeous. I, I, obviously, I've already seen these in his Instagram. You know what? I never did find. We're going to have to go back through. I think there is one other Geomancy figure hidden in this deck. I've, I've got his email. I'll check that in just a second. Look at how gorgeous this is. It's such a beautiful... It feels like um, if, if there's such a thing as modern retro, <laughs> that's what it feels like. I don't think that's an actual term, but boy, do I love it. Look how gorgeous that looks. Okay, I'm looking here to see. Do I see... Gee, there's my beautiful here, but I'm 90% sure there is another geomancy figure... Maybe it's in one of the glyphs. It might be one of the glyphs. I haven't been paying a strong attention to the glyphs, but let's let me look. And then I'll look at his message because he does explain. He had somebody teach him geomancy, and he had actually considered to make a geomancy deck, um, but then he did realize you, what's the beauty of geomancy is you don't need a deck, right? You need a piece of paper and a pen um, and something to, you know, some dice to roll or some coins to flip. Um, it's part of the beauty of geomancy is that you really don't need anything. Um, and, you know, we kind of shifted gears here. Um, but I just thought that was such a neat thing because I asked him, I'm like, you know, I don't see that. That isn't, you know, it's not something that you see. Okay, let me look at his mail. Because I'm obviously probably looking at something really obvious and going to say, oh my goodness, Kelly, what, what is your problem? <laughs> let me find it. Um, he says that Geomancy actually inspired a lot of this deck. A friend taught him a few years ago. Again, he was working on the deck. He decided it doesn't really need it. But he took some of it and infused it into this deck. He said there used to be several geomantic figures on different cards. Some got covered up on reworks, but Puela is still on the tree. Oh, okay, let's find Puela on the tree. Oh, there it is. I don't have my glasses on. Okay, let's 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 zoom in. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this on the camera, but there is one dot, a line, and two dots below it. That is the geomancy figure for Puela. Um, that's there. I, I don't think you would even notice that if you didn't know to look for it. Or you might. If I had my glasses on, maybe I would. <laughs> I like to, I'll, I'll pretend that I would have seen that uh, better had I had my glasses on. I do have poor eyesight, so please don't take that. But it's just those little hidden things. But, but this, I mean, come on. This just makes my soul so happy. So, so very happy. Um, so anyways, yeah, there's that little thing. But yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous. Um, the card stock is divine. Uh, the box is divine. Um, the guidebook, I really am pleased with the guidebook. I wasn't sure what to expect there with the guidebook because, um, you know, it, that can be hit and miss with Lenormand. Sometimes you, you don't get quite enough that if you were completely new um, to, Tara, uh, to Lenormand, you may not really be able to just take this and the sets and do something with it. Whereas I do actually believe you could take this guidebook and at least get yourself started, right? And have a pretty good um, start on being able to work with, with Lenormand. And I think that's a real treasure, right? Because not everybody buying uh, Lenormand decks already know how to read Lenormand and so having a solid um, um, guidebook to get you going um, it could make the difference between picking it up and just putting it down and never using it again and picking it up and really giving it a chance and actually using it and maybe coming into a love of Lenormand. So I think that that's pretty cool. So there we go. Uh, I will put a link below to the Kickstarter um, 
uh, I have, again, if you're just interested in Lenormand, I have quite a few um, playlists about Lenormand and going through Lenormand from beginning to end and all kinds of things. So you can find stuff there as well. Um, obviously, I have all of his decks, and so I'm thrilled to have this one. It will be certainly one that I actually use too, which is, you know, there's decks you collect because you love them, and there's decks you use. This is going to be both. So um, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks to James for letting me have this opportunity to share this, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.